everyone, Dr. Campbell here. And in this video, I would like to introduce you to the 2020 ICD-10 CM code book. For purposes of this demonstration, I am utilizing the AMA's complete official code book. All right, let's begin. So the first thing that you should know is that the ICD-10 code book or coding manual, as some of us refer to it as, is essentially divided into four parts. You have the guidelines, the official guidelines for coding and reporting. You have the alphabetical index, which is divided into four parts. We have the tabular list, which is divided into 21 chapters. And then we have the different appendices. As you're learning the ICD-10 CM code set, it's critical that you first become familiar with the manual itself. So let's first start with the guidelines. And I'm gonna actually pan over to my code book to actually show you where they are. You're gonna go past some of the introduction to the manual, which I highly recommend that you take a look at. So here, and this is actually page one, we have the ICD-10 official coding guidelines uh, for coding and reporting. These guidelines are must read uh, for learning coding as well as for national exams. They are so, 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 so critical. Now, the guidelines themselves are actually divided into four sections, and then there's one appendix. Section one is divided into parts A, B, and C. And let's take a look at those parts now. So section one, and notice I have some highlighting in my manual, that's very important. So section one is for conventions, general coding guidelines, and chapter specific guidelines. Section A, 1A, and you'll wanna get to, used to calling it by this name. Section 1A focuses on conventions for ICD-10 CM, and then Section 1A has 19 guidelines that you'll want to review. Then we go to Section 1B, and in Section 1B, you also have 19 guidelines that you will want to be familiar with. Now, I do want you to notice that outside of noticing that Section 1B is general coding guidelines. If someone asks you a question about section 1B4, 1B4, you should recognize that section 1B4 are general coding guidelines specifically for signs and symptoms. Now you'll wanna let that sink in for a while because it does take a little, little while to kind of grasp. All right, so then after that, we have section 1C, which are the chapter specific guidelines. Now, as it relates to the chapter specific guidelines, I want you to be aware of that they are actually listed in the manual twice. They're up front, but then they're also in the tabular list. And I'll actually show you that once we get over there. All right, so then the section 1 C is actually divided into 21 chapters. Of those 21 chapters, there are three chapters that we currently don't have guidelines for, and you'll see that once you continue to explore the manual in more detail. All right, so I'm gonna turn over and section two is for selection of principal diagnoses. And then section three is for reporting additional diagnoses. Of note, if you're taking the CPC credential, you actually do not need to read section two and three. Section two and three are only for 
those individuals that are taking the CIC credential offered through the AAPC, or if you're taking the CCS credential offered through AHIMA. So section two and three, if you're taking the CPC or the CCSP, you don't need to read section two and three. Then we have section four. Section four are the diagnostic and coding reporting guidelines for outpatient services. And if you're taking all exams, you definitely need to read section four. Okay, so let's kind of recap on our guidelines. So section one is divided into A, B, and C. A are the conventions for ICD-10 CM. B, general coding guidelines, and then C, the chapter specific guidelines. And then there are 21 chapters in the ICD-10 CM code set, but three of those chapters actually don't have guidelines. All right, the next part of the manual is known as the alphabetical index. And the alphabetical index actually starts on page one. So once you get past the actual uh, guidelines, about 31 pages of guidelines, once you get past those, then you're going to run into the alphabetical index. The alphabetical index is divided into four parts. The first part, again, is on page one, and it's the ICD-10 CM index to diseases and injuries. Now, once you get past the index to diseases and injuries, uh, the next thing that you're going to see is the neoplasm table. And this is going to be on page, starts on page 330 in our 2020 code manual. And this is what it looks like. And then after the neoplasm table, there's actually another table. And that table is known as the table of drugs and chemicals. And that's on page, starts on page 349. And that's what this particular table looks like. Then the last part of the alphabetic index is called the external causes index. And this is where um, we actually have codes to show how an accident or injury occurred. We can also show the place of occurrence. We can show uh, the activity that the person was doing. We can actually show um, if the individual was getting paid for the services that were being rendered. So this is, these are like uh, supplemental codes that we add because they are not codes that are showing what the injury or illness was, rather they're showing how they happened. So kind of like the who, what, when, where, and why of an injury. All right, so let's review. The alphabetical index has four parts the index to diseases and injuries. Then we have the neoplasm table. After the neoplasm table, we have the hypertension table. And after the hypertension table, we have the table of drugs and chemicals. Now let's spend some time understanding um, one of the areas that we're gonna use a lot which is the index to diseases and injuries. And I would ask that you go over to page 97. And on page 97, we are actually going to be looking at the main term of diabetes. Now, there's a couple of things that I want you to notice when you look at the main term diabetes. Number one, diabetes is in bold print. Whenever we are looking up a disease, an illness, injury, or condition, we always wanna start with a main term. And the main term is essentially like the action word, what's actively happening with the patient, okay? So if you look at diabetes, 
you'll notice it says diabetes, diabetic. Then there are two words in parentheses. Those words in parentheses are known as non-essential modifiers, which basically means that they don't impact code assignment. They're just other words that are, that are used for that condition. And then directly behind that, you'll notice E11-9. The code that is listed directly after the main term is known as the default code. And guess what? When you read your guidelines, you'll actually learn about the default code. Prior to using the actual code book, it's critical that you sit down and read through the guidelines once just to start to build awareness about their existence. And once you use the code set over and over and over again, you actually will start to learn them. Now, you're not going to learn them immediately, um, but if you keep practicing, you will learn them. All right. So then um, the other thing I want you to notice um, in the manual, you should see these two gray lines. And I'm going to turn on my light to see if I can shine a little light on it. Yes. So the first gray line represents the subterm that is available for a main term. And some main terms have several subterms. And the subterms are designed to provide greater specificity for a code that you're actually looking at. So if we look at diabetes, the first subterm is width. And if you keep down this one page, again, following that gray line, you'll notice that that's the only subterm in this particular column right here. But then if I go to my next column, width is still there, but then width turns into options such as brittle, bronzed, complicating pregnancy, dietary counseling and surveillance, due to, due to drug or chemical. And as you turn, and again, we're following that first gray line, uh, which is the subterm, due to drug or chemical continues. Whenever you see the word continue, that lets you know you're not at the beginning of that particular um, code family, okay? Um, then notice we have due to underlying condition with, and then from there, we have all the way down at the bottom of the page, gestational. And then I'm going to go to the top of the page in the second column, and I'm on page 98 in the 2020 code manual. Then um, we have gestational that's continuing. And then let's let that get focused here. We have hepatogenesis, idiopathic, uh, all those different options. Then we have specified type. And then eventually we get over to type one. And if I turn the page, we're on type two. So let's pause here for a, mi a minute so I can uh, make sure you understand why this is important. So when you're looking up a condition, you go to the main term, and then you explore the subterms that are available to get greater specificity with your diagnoses. Now, notice there is a second gray line, and the second gray, gray line is like a carryover line. It provides even more specificity about a condition. So, for example, we're looking at diabetes. That's our main term. Main terms are in bold print. Under diabetes, and notice I have this highlighted because this is an area um, that I go to quite often, uh, type one, type two. So I actually have it um, highlighted in my manual so that when I'm actually looking at that page, it kind of pops out for me. And those are just some tricks that you're gonna learn um, when you are actually coding, just you know, things that you wanna highlight. You don't wanna highlight your whole book. <laughs> but you want to make sure that certain things pop out for you. So main term is diabetes, subterm type one, and then under type one,
That second gray line, notice with, that's the carryover line, with any of these conditions. So what's happening in order to code to what is known as the highest level of specificity, you wanna make sure that you look at the main term, the subterm, and then anything under that subterm to fully specify that condition. Sometimes the documentation won't even give you um, that specificity and you have to go with the default code. And then other times um, you are given that specificity and you can go deeper. Okay, so that's the alphabetical index. The coding process actually begins there. And then what happens is we go to what's known as the tabular list of the manual to actually verify the code. So let's take a look at the tabular list now. Okay, so next we're going to go over to what's known as the tabular list. So remember earlier when I spoke about the guidelines, I mentioned that the chapter specific guidelines are in the front of the manual with the rest of the guidelines, but they're also in the tabular list and they are actually placed directly in front of the chapter that those guidelines pertain to. So there are 21 chapters in the tabular list. So let's go back to our manual. And we're gonna start with chapter one, which is certain infectious and parasitic diseases. And these are codes A00 through B99. And they start off with guidelines. Now the other benefit of this area here is that in addition to actually having guidelines, there are also in the little purple boxes, there are actually some explanation of those um, that particular guideline. Now they don't have an explanation for all of the guidelines, but they do have um, some of the more common ones, they have some explanation. The other thing I want you to notice about the tabular list compared to the alphabetical index is that the end of the pages are colored, okay? So after chapter one, I'm gonna go over to chapter two. Chapter two are the codes for neoplasms, codes C00 through D49. And the letter D is actually shared by the um, blood and blood forming organs. Um, it's a different color. So the neoplasm, the end is actually kind of like a blue color. And then when you get over to blood and blood forming organs, the end of the page is red. So blood and blood forming organs, those codes are D50 through D89. And remember I said earlier that of the 21 chapters, three of the chapters actually doesn't have any guidelines. So this is actually the first chapter that does not have any guidelines. And here it states they are reserved for future guideline expansion. All right, next up, we're gonna go over to the codes that start with the letter E. And this is our endocrine, nutritional, and metabolic diseases. And this is where the diabetes codes are housed, if you remember that from a few minutes ago. All right, after that, we have chapter five, which is our mental, behavioral, and neurodevelopmental disorders, F01 through F99. And then from there, we have chapter six, which is diseases of the nervous system, G00 through G99. And again, as I mentioned, the pages are different color. Chapter seven, we have the diseases of the eye and at Nexa, that's H00 through H59. Now, what you'll wanna note for uh, that particular code family is that um, we do have some guidelines and um, just a few and of course the purple boxes with the examples. Now the letter H does share with the ear and mastoid and what you're going to notice 
is that the ear and mastoid, which is chapter eight, there are no guidelines for that area as well. All right, and then we're gonna go over to chapter nine. The codes start with the letter I. And one of the things that you are going to start um, to remember is basically, you know, what the codes begin with and what body system they're associated with. So chapter nine, diseases of the circulatory system, and those codes start with an I. And of course, the guidelines are there, like I love you, for example. That's how I remember those codes. I love my heart. All right, chapter 10. J00 through J99. And these are the codes for the respiratory system. And then over to chapter 11, um, which are for the diseases of the digestive system, K00 through K95. I remember this like um, K-O-Pectate <laughs> for digestive system. You got to come up with ways to learn what the first letter is. It'll really help you when you are um, just trying to recognize codes, all right? So notice no guidelines here. We're gonna go over to L, and L is for the diseases of the skin and subcutaneous tissue, L00 through L99. I remember this code because L for lotion. <laughs> um, then we have chapter 13, which is for the diseases of the musculoskeletal system and connective tissue. M00 through M99. And um, here you're gonna find like injuries that are related to a disease process, more of a pathological um, injury as opposed to a traumatic one. And we'll see those shortly. M for muscle. Um, the M, the chapter um, for this one is pretty large in terms of the number of codes that are available. Then um, we have chapter 14, the codes that start with the letter N. Those are for the genital urinary system, N00 through N99. And then from there, oh baby, <laughs> we have chapter 15 codes, pregnancy, childbirth, and the preparium. And those codes start with the letter O. That's why I said, oh baby, oh baby, there's a baby coming. So O00 through O nine A. All right. Then um, in after that, we have chapter sixteen, conditions originating in the perinatal period P zero zero through P ninety six. That's for our um, a lot of codes for our newborns are here. Then we have chapter 17, congenital malformation, deformation, and chromosomal abnormalities. These are our codes that start with a Q. That's chapter 17. Chapter 18 are for codes related to symptoms, signs, and abnormal clinical and laboratory findings, not elsewhere classified. And if you remember earlier, when I was going through the guidelines, I showed you guideline section 1b4 those were the guidelines one of the guidelines for coding signs and symptoms so what i want you to see is that before you even start looking up codes you really want to take the opportunity to sit down and um code through or read through the guidelines first not code through but read through the guidelines first all right then we have chapter 19 which is a huge section um, in fact, let me show you how huge it is. So I'm on page 949. And this particular section, these are all the pages here. It goes over to page 1150. Okay. So here, chapter 19, you have injury poisoning and certain other consequences of external causes, S00 through T88. And then we're almost done with the tabular list. We have chapter 20 which are the external causes of morbidity. Remember that external cause um, of injury index I showed you? Well, here are where those codes are, um, as well as the guidelines. And you'll notice I have a little note highlighted in my book. Remember I told you these codes are supplemental? And so I highlighted for myself that these codes are never to be sequenced first. Um, you have to have an illness or injury that's going to be sequenced first. 
Um, and then the other thing here, and this is why the guidelines are so important, these guidelines actually tell us that these codes capture how the injury or health condition happened, that's the cause, the intent, unintentional or accidental, um, the place of occurrence, the activity that the patient had at the time of the event, and then the person's status, whether it's military or non-military. Again, I just want you to understand how important it is to read the guidelines from start to finish um, before you actually even start to code. Okay, and then after that, we have chapter 21. And chapter 21 codes are, um, they're the Z codes. They start with the letter Z. And these are the codes for factors influencing health status and contact with health services. And these codes are important um, because sometimes patients have health services and they're not necessarily sick, but we have to have a way to explain to the insurance company why the patient is there today. Um, because this code set, ICD-10-CM, explains why a patient is receiving healthcare services today. These codes help confirm the medical necessity, or not confirm, maybe support, <laughs> support the medical necessity of a service that is going to be provided. All right, so again, there are 21 chapters in the tabular list of the ICD-10-CM. And then after that, you have uh, what are known as appendices. Um, so the first appendix is known as the um, valid three character codes, a list of three character codes that are valid. You're probably thinking, well, what does that mean? Well, with ICD-10-CM, our codes can be anywhere from three to seven characters in length. And so there are some codes that are at their highest level of specificity at three characters. And so they just gave us a list here so that we would know that we weren't confused. That code is as specific as it can get. So for example, let's go back over to our um, manual. And if we look at code B20, human immuno deficiency, virus, HIV disease, there is no further specificity that's needed for that condition. Just like if a patient has um, multiple sclerosis, that's code G35. That's the highest level of specificity for that particular code. So we do have a couple of codes where three characters are as specific as we have available to us. All right, so then we have a pharmacology list, a list of what's known as long-term use codes. Then we have um, another area for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, HCC codes. Then we have the CMS quality physician payment information, and then we have illustrations. Now, one of the things that I think is important that you, that you do is read through the appendices again before you even start to code a scenario just get to know your manual read through those guidelines first it will go a long way in how you attack icd-10 cm coding uh, so appendix b the pharmacology list coders have to know pharmacology then we have um, appendix c and this is actually um, a list of long-term use codes. And you probably wonder, what do you mean by that? Well, sometimes we have, med we have patients that are on medications for a long term. And so we actually have additional codes to add to the patient's account to say that that patient is on uh, Eliquis, for example, for a long period of time. And that's Z7901. Of note, um, the, the list here in Appendix C is actually grouping them together by drug category, but Appendix B is in alphabetical order, 
Okay, just as an FYI. Um, and then let's go straight over to the appendices or the illustrations. One of the reasons that I like the illustrations is because on a national uh, coding exam, you are going to have some questions on anatomy or you are going to be coding something and knowing the body part is going to be important. So um, if you look at these illustrations, it will help you with correct code assignment. And one of the things you can do is you can actually add notes to the diagram. So let's say there's a body part over here that you actually want to label. You can add it in to your book. It will be very helpful. But one of the things I recommend you do, just take a look at the pictures, um, become very familiar um, with what is listed on them. And it really, truly, truly will help you with the coding process. Okay, so just um, I want to walk through an example. And I want to do a course, diabetes, because we started with diabetes. Um, so I want to code a situation. I'm going to say my patient has type 2 diabetes with cataract. So the very first thing I need to do is go to main, main term of diabetes, right? And I stated that my patient has diabetes type two. And so here, notice this says type one. So I need to turn over to find type two. And usually, again, what I do is try to, my very common areas that I'm going to, I like to highlight them. Um, at the beginning of the year, of course, my book is not highlighted and I have to highlight it. So diabetes is my main term. How do I know? It's in bold print. My subterm on that first gray line is for type 2. And I mentioned that my patient had cataracts. So I don't want to just stop at type 2 E11.9. I have to go to width and then cataract. That's very, very, very important. So the index tells me E1136. One rule of thumb with coding is that you can never code from the alphabetical index. And remember, the alphabetical index has four parts, the index to diseases and injuries, the neoplasm table, the uh, table of drugs and chemicals, and then the, um, and I think I had the wrong name earlier, but it's the external cause um, of injury table. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. looks like I had lost power for a few minutes. So um, I want to make sure that you know that we can never, ever, ever code from the alphabetical index only. And there are four parts to the alphabetical index. And just so you remember what those are, the index to diseases and injuries, the neoplasm table, the table of drugs and chemicals, and then external causes. Okay, so let's go back to looking up diabetes so we can wrap this up. So my patient has type 2 diabetes with cataract, and I have to go down to E11.6. If I were to stop at E11.9, that wouldn't actually capture my cataract. In any case, you always have to verify the code in the tabular list. And uh, so I'm going to go over to E11.36. And I'm over on page 520. And over on page 520, E11.36 says type two diabetes with diabetic cataract. Now, one of the other things that you'll notice, um, and this is something that you're gonna learn about, at the bottom of each page, there are these different symbols. So you see here, HCC, Q, N, P, M, A. If I turn over, I have additional character required placeholder alert, manifestation, manifestations, unspecified diagnoses, all these different things. You're probably wondering, well, where did they actually explain that at? And I'm glad that you asked. And up front on 
Roman numeral page one, there's an area that's called how to use the ICD-10 CM, the official code book. I recommend that you read through that because what it's going to do is basically introduce you to the book. It's going to introduce you to the different symbols and notations that you're going to see in the manual. So before you read the guidelines, that's the first thing that you want to do. And I'm going to show you what it looks like so you know where to begin. So to begin this process, you're going to start with how to use the ICD-10 CM official code book. And then from there, um, they have uh, 10 steps to correct coding. Make sure you read that. And then, of course, from there, guidelines, guidelines, guidelines. Before you start any coding, do those steps first. That will set you up for success. Uh, please make sure that you follow us on uh, social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. LinkedIn, and of course, you are listening to Dr. Campbell's Coding and CDI Corner. Have a great day.